What's up guys? Welcome to today's video and welcome to my channel if you are new. So first and foremost, just wanted to say Happy New Year. I know that 2020 was definitely a year of ups and downs for all of us. Honestly, I'm just super excited to dive right into 2021, share with you guys my tips and tricks for staying fit, um, my prep, my journey, as well as some healthy recipes, some workouts, all that fun stuff, and I hope that you guys are interested in following along. So today's video is gonna be a protein banana bread recipe, which was actually sent over by a really good friend of mine, Jason. So he sent me over a little video, which I will play for you guys right now. What's going on, Taylor? So the recipe that we're gonna take on today is gonna be a healthier version of a banana bread recipe, and it's gonna be jam-packed with protein and some holiday festiveness. Now, just a couple of quick recommendations for this recipe. In terms of baking time, 28 minutes to 30 minutes seems to be prime time, and for the bananas, riper the better. So if it looks brown and uh, to the point where it looks like it needs to be tossed, it's probably gonna bode you well. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy and happy holidays. Stay safe, peace. Based on what he just said, I am super excited to try this recipe out. If you guys haven't checked out his channel already, make sure that you do. It's gonna be linked down below. He has tons of high protein, low calorie recipes. And that's something that I think is super, super important to incorporate into your diet or your routine, especially if you're just starting your fitness journey. Getting creative is so important and it's something that I talk about all the time. For someone who has tracked macros for five plus years and calories, getting creative with my diet and the things that I was eating was definitely the key to me staying on track. Just for fitness and lifestyle in general, getting creative and swapping things out or using healthier alternatives was such an important factor when I was tracking calories in me staying consistent and not feeling restricted. And I think that it's a great way to start if you're you know, new to your diet or you're new to tracking calories or macros, getting creative and having fun with it is definitely the key to success in my opinion. So check out his channel if you haven't already and check out my healthy recipes and alternatives because I think it makes such a big difference when you are tracking calories or macros if you can kind of get flexible with it and have fun with it. So yeah, the next thing you guys will see after the recipe is a workout. I'm just gonna pop a little workout in here. Same thing, I think it's important that you stay creative and have fun in the gym. And I'm gonna try to share with you guys my workouts as I'm going through this prep and different ways I train certain body areas to hopefully help inspire you and motivate you. And also just give you some ideas in how you can switch up your training or maybe there's certain exercises that you didn't even know work certain areas or whatever it might be. Hopefully it helps you guys out. So if you try out this recipe, make sure that you let me know, you let Jason know. Same thing with the workout, tag me, you know, send me a DM, comment on this video, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know that you're enjoying this kind of content. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that recipe now. I'm super excited. So thanks Jason for taking the time to send me this video, send me this recipe. I can't wait for my sister and my roommate to try it out. Obviously, unfortunately, I'm on a meal plan right now because I'm on prep, but I will definitely be trying this out as soon as my prep is over and I'm super excited to hear what they have to say about it. So let's go ahead and dive right into that and we'll see you guys when we get in the kitchen. All right guys, so I have the recipe here in front of me. We are in the kitchen. I preheat the oven to 350. I have to double check that. I will put it down below what it's actually supposed to be. I'm just gonna read out to you exactly what we're gonna be using and I'm gonna show you guys the brands and whatnot that I have. So first off is 150 grams of flour. So I've got just regular all-purpose flour here with me. So 150 grams of this. It also says that we need 32 grams of whey casein. So I have the Transparent Labs grass-fed whey protein here. This is the cinnamon pastry one. So Jason actually is an athlete for Transparent Labs and I obviously am a Jack Factory kind of girl and I usually use the Jack Factory isolate protein powder but I wanted to make sure that I was using exactly what he was using and obviously supporting him. So we have the Transparent Labs just for this recipe and we're gonna be going in with the cinnamon pastry, like I said, so we need 32 grams of that. And the reason why he uses whey and casein is because it actually bakes a lot better than an isolate. You will find for a protein pancakes, sometimes you can get away with an isolate protein powder. I usually use isolates for cheesecakes and desserts like that, but for baking, whey, casein blends, or just whey in general, usually bake a lot better or nicer in that kind of stuff. So we're going in with this one today. We also need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, so I've just got that here with me this kind 
I think this is like the standard kind that you'll find around at your grocery store. So going in with this one, we also need six ounces of fat-free Greek yogurt. So I just picked this one up from Costco. It's just the plain fat-free Greek yogurt from Costco. For a reason, nothing wants to focus, but the six ounces of that. Um, we also need 50 grams of butter. I have light B cell, which is margarine, I think. So this might make a difference. I'm not 100% sure, but I just wanted to use what I have here at the house. So this is what I'm going in with. Um, we also need four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So for vanilla extract, I've just got this one here. Same thing, picked up whatever was at the grocery store. This is the one that I always carry at my house. So using this one and 122 grams of ripe banana. So the riper the better. He's basically saying that if it's ready to be thrown in the garbage, then you're good to go. So I actually froze them. So I have these ones here. Hopefully these will be like soft enough by the time I go to put them into the bowl. But I have the bananas there. You need two tablespoons of cinnamon. So I've got this one here. And same thing, just buy the large tub because I use so much of it. We also need a dash of nutmeg, which I have to double check and see if I have. I don't think I do, but I might. And we need a dash of salt and 20 grams of walnuts. So I just bought these ones from the grocery store. And walnuts can actually be super expensive. So I'm curious to see if you guys can do like almonds or something different and it would make a difference or not. But I know that walnuts usually go really well in carrot cake and like banana bread recipes. So I'm gonna stick with these ones. And yeah, so I'll let you guys know exactly what I think as well as what my sister thinks and if my roommate tries it, what she thinks of course. And otherwise the oven is preheated. So let's go ahead and make some banana bread. Okay, so if you have a blender, I definitely think that you should probably put it in there. Um, I just used a potato masher to mash it all up. Anyways, I have to get a blender, clearly, but I don't know, it doesn't really look like a bread type of mixture, but I'm after making a lot of really cool things with like Greek yogurt, um, applesauce, banana, baking soda, flour, and like not using the typical ingredients, and it taking me by surprise. So I'm super excited to see how this turns out. I have this little pan here, hopefully this is the right size, and I'm just gonna basically scoop this into the pan, put it in for around 18, 20 minutes, keeping an eye on it, because my oven seems to be a little bit hotter than the usual for whatever reason. I think it just gets like, I don't know, it just does its own thing. But <laughs> anyways, so I'll let you guys know what it looks like once it's all finished. It actually looks really good. It smells good too. Look who decided to show up as soon as it was ready. <laughs> of course. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut up a little piece and she's gonna test it out for us and let us know what she thinks. It's actually super thick. It looks really good. All right, here you go. Texture is great. I like the, is it walnuts in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. All right, so it's good. Um, we're gonna head to the gym now. Uh, definitely try it out guys. If you guys do try it out, like I said, let me know. And um, it took me literally 25 minutes to put it together, put it in the oven and clean it up. My kitchen is fully clean. I did it all while it was in the oven. Good recipe overall. And yeah, I think it's time for us to go on in and get this workout done. So we'll see you guys when we get to the gym. All right, so we're outside the gym. Uh, she's gonna let you guys know what she thinks about the banana bread. And I think that I should have added some more sweetener. I obviously used stevia instead of the brown sugar sweetener, whatever it was that Jason had recommended. So that's probably my fault, but yeah, just let them know what you think. Yeah, it was good. It was definitely a nice alternative to like a sweet treat, I guess. Like it's the texture was- Like a baked good. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like mm -hmm. I, for me, it's like the texture. It's like when I want something sweet or like a treat or I don't know, it'd be nice to just like have on hand because I feel like it fulfills that. And like when you're eating it, you can tell it's more of like a healthier snack, but it's still like sort of kind of the crunchiness and the texture and the sweetness of it takes oh care God, of that like, Yeah. Yeah. That's what I got good. from like looking at it normally. 
when you bake with protein, things can get really like hard. I feel like he nailed it with like the oh serving. Oh my god, it wasn't hard at all. Yeah, like it was. It looked amazing. It smelled so good, and I think that the cinnamon protein really went hand in hand with the actual recipe. So I'm happy that I went with that. Um, I think if you toss some like semi sweet chocolate chips in there, it would be so good. And she actually dipped a little bit in Nutella, and she said that that was amazing too. So it was really good. Yeah, like just healthier alternatives in general. You know, you can toss in chocolate chips, do what you want with it. But we're gonna take some pre workout and head into the gym now. So I'm just gonna prop you guys up while we do that. So whenever you say head into the gym, really like, head into the gym. <laughs> head into the gym. Canceled. It's canceled. <laughs> All right, so we have Nitro Surge as per usual, the white flavor, the Arctic white flavor. I'm um, gonna do a scoop of this. Are you having some? Yep. <laughs> Why can't you do it? <laughs> I'm crying. It literally hit my tonsils. She's actually crying right now. I thought I was gonna die. I closed my eyes and my life <laughs> flashed before this. I guess we're not really identical. Oh. Hey, hi sir. You single? <laughs> okay, hold on, where's the scoop? All right, going in with some Pump Surge. So we have Cheery Limeade, best flavor in my opinion with the Pump Surge, so cheers. dramatic for the for the viewers I think my coach didn't teach me how to do it properly all right so that is it we're going into the gym so we'll see you guys when we get in there that workout it is actually the next day so just wanted to close out the video by chatting a little bit about how I'm feeling and everything because I did mention being on a meal plan and obviously making macro friendly recipes and healthy alternatives and all of that is something that I'm super passionate about and something that I really enjoy and the last few weeks being on a meal plan I've for sure been feeling super off and weird and I couldn't really pinpoint like why it was that I was feeling like irritable and like I my food hasn't really changed so I'm not hungry and I, I didn't really know like what it was that was bothering me so much but I think that the more I get into my routine and the swing of things and like you know I guess like making these videos and stuff the more I'm missing tracking macros and calories and just like, getting creative because that's something that I'm just super passionate about and I figured I would just be open and honest and share that with you guys because honestly a meal plan approach is not something that 
I would recommend someone do for the rest of their lives. Um, I think it's a great tool and I'm super, super excited to be on a meal plan, especially when I get closer and closer to my show. But I just wanted to point out that I started working with my coach October 1st. So that means I started a meal plan three months ago and I still have 21 weeks left-ish till my show. So that means I'm gonna be on a meal plan for another 21 weeks or... And even after that, I, I'm planning on continuing to compete you know going forward so i might take a few weeks off here and there track calories i'm not really sure what the plan is but um i'm used to a flexible approach i've done that for five years or more that's how i coach and that's how i personally think you're able to maintain a really balanced healthy relationship with food by being flexible um you know changing things up getting creative with your diet i guess what i'm trying to say is i've been feeling a little bit irritable lately and i think it's due to the fact that i've been eating the same stuff for so long um consistency has helped me so much and it's definitely key but i did want to be transparent and open with everyone like my viewers and you guys and i have been feeling irritable and i have been feeling like a little bit unsatisfied and i think my cravings are coming through now and i'm just like kind of like oh it kind of sucks that i can't try these things or eat these things or like switch things up and it was my decision to start this so early so i can't really blame it on anybody else like i asked my coach to start early because i kind of fell off the wagon at the end of the summer and i wasn't really in a good spot mentally or physically to begin a prep and i wanted to start working with him and see you know what we could do in this whole like building process before cutting down so i don't blame anybody for that i haven't tried this approach before in regular day life and i think it's fair to say that if i was just to be living everyday life i would definitely be tracking my calories and being flexible with it i think that a meal plan is great especially getting you through the week or for structure as a guideline that's how i like to coach personally but um for prep, I think it's definitely going to be beneficial. I'm super excited to be on this meal plan as I get closer and closer to my show because the more you're dieting, the more you're spending hours and hours in the gym, the less you want to think about what it is that you have to make or calculating calories and macros or what foods are going to bother you. And it's a really great way for your coach to be able to say, hey, okay, these things are consistent. So now going forward, my coach can say, okay, when Taylor eats rice, this is what happens to her. So I know um, peak week, show day, maybe we shouldn't eat rice, maybe we should. So that's why a meal plan is going to be super beneficial, I think, to me as I get closer and closer to my show but i have been for sure feeling a little bit irritable lately because i'm still so far away from the show and i've been doing this for so long that i'm just kind of like uh like i'm just bored of it i guess and i i wanted to be honest about that because i think that that's important and i think that pretending like i'm extremely happy with eating the same thing every single day all the time is just unrealistic and it's not the way that i would live a regular healthy lifestyle and i guess basically it's just not what I would encourage for anyone who isn't competing or bodybuilding or for someone who doesn't have specific training goals. It's just not something that I would recommend. Like I really just think that the flexible dieting approach is probably the best, most realistic approach for just an overall healthy, balanced lifestyle. So I'm just trying to be transparent here and let you guys know how I'm feeling because I feel like that that's important. And I guess after talking with my sister and um, doing some reflecting, I just realized that that's kind of what it is. I'm just kind of bored with my food and bored with what um, I've been doing for so long, but like it has been working and I'm I'm gonna continue to do it and it's gonna be extremely helpful and beneficial the closer and closer I get to my show. I know 20 weeks is a long time and I may take a few weeks afterwards and track calories or do something different or talk to my coach and see what he thinks, but um, for competition prep, I think that the meal plan approach is just so much easier, especially if you already have experience with macros and calories. I think that starting out so early with the same meal plan was probably where I made my mistake or maybe where I should have tried to do something differently um, and, and you live and you learn. So that's pretty much it. I don't know if that even really made sense. If anyone ever feels this way, like you ever feel irritable or like, you know, you're unhappy, just try to reflect and figure out what it is. Like ever since I talked to my sister about it and even now filming, talking about how I've been feeling like irritable and stuff has me feeling so much better and so much more in tune with myself. Like I'm able to be like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling this way and this is why and you know why am I doing it and then I can say okay well I'm doing it because I want to compete and I want to be consistent and I want my body to you know respond well to these foods and I want to you know make progress and I want my coach to be able to understand what I'm doing and why but at the same time I have to do what I like and I have to be aware of what I don't like and going forward maybe I won't start a meal plan so early on 
um, but I only know that now because I did it. So hopefully this makes sense. I just wanted to like come on and talk a little bit about it. I also really hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you again, Jason, for sending it along to me. I really appreciate it. I encourage you guys to get creative. There are so many healthy alternative recipes out there, especially on Jason's page. I also have a little playlist created, which I will link for you guys if you guys are interested in seeing some things that I personally like to do, especially when I was tracking calories and macros and yeah, and I'll continue to share those with you guys because I'm really passionate about it. I love coaching people with macros and I love just like playing around with protein recipes and fun recipes and all of that. Even when I'm on a meal plan, I can still have fun with it. My sister and my roommate track their calories. So we'll be doing lots of that. So just because I'm on a meal plan, it doesn't mean that you guys can't get creative and I still can't show you guys some fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in a couple of days for another little prep update.